Okay, thank you. Um, okay, let's get started. And of course, this announcement is going out on Facebook, so people will join as they're as they get the message. And if you've planned ahead, you're already here, and I appreciate that. I'm sorry about the beeping. I didn't turn that off yet, so hopefully it won't bother you too much. The topic is the dark side of Asperger's. And of course, the dark side of Asperger's is narcissism. That doesn't mean that everybody with uh, autism spectrum disorder is a narcissist. It doesn't mean that at all. It's just that that is um, something that we human beings can do when we feel threatened. We can get pretty wrapped up um, in our belief system, in our defensiveness. Um, Malena says uh, the live stream was seven minutes late. I'm a little confused about that. It's supposed to actually start at 1.15, but maybe it was posted for one. I try to give myself 15 minutes to get everything all set up. So I'll make sure the time is, is right next time. Um, okay, so the topic again is, uh, you know, the dark side of Asperger syndrome. So we'll talk about that. We'll talk about how the dark side is narcissism and what I mean by narcissism, maybe not diagnosable. Um, We'll talk about the ghosting, gaslighting, and other games that people on the spectrum play. And by games, I mean the manipulations and sidestepping and forgetfulness and other forms of confusing the issues that result in chaos. We'll talk about the unrelenting grief that is part of a neurodivergent relationship. We'll talk about anger, assertiveness, and Asperger's. And we'll expose, excuse me, explore the reasons behind the anger. So there's, there's just a lot packed into this. Now, before I jump into uh, that, that topic, though, I want to remind people that uh, this is an open forum. So it's a public forum. You are more than welcome to post questions and comments in the comment section. I keep looking over there to see if there's anything that I need to respond to. Thanks, Melina. It says one o'clock. I'm so sorry. I'll make sure the time's right next time. And uh, the, uh, but if you post things over there, do realize that uh, other other people can see them, not just people that are members of our private group. Now, I do have uh, 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 two, or well, three forums that are private, not on Facebook. There's three forums. There's the meetup group. There's the advanced community forum, and those two groups are for neurotypicals who want to have a private place to talk with other neurotypicals about life with a partner or an adult, a parent or a grown child or sibling on the autism spectrum. The meetup group is, um, I put the link in the little write-up so you can click that and join the meetup group. The meetup group is a great place to start to learn more about this because what you're doing in the meetup group is sort of getting your feet wet, dipping your toe into the to the uh, context of neurodivergent relationships because maybe you've suspected this is true, maybe someone has suggested it to you. Um, it's uh, And we offer these groups that I'm gonna talk about here in a little bit. The a advanced community forum grew out of our meetup group. I started that last year. And the advanced community forum is where neurotypicals who really want to dive deeper into the subject, who really want to enhance their skills, who don't want to just sort of understand things, but want to be able to actually grow into more, um, more ways of taking care of yourself in relationship to your neurodiverse partner. And then the third forum is uh, goes along with the online course that I'm offering, Asperger Syndrome and Relationships. It's an online recorded course, self-paced, that both neurotypicals and neurodiverse partners can take together or separately. And as a result of taking the online course, then you can also go into the community forum and talk with other neurodiverse and neurotypicals together. You kind of get to mingle with people that think differently than you do or, or who think the same. As a matter of fact, last night, I, I hosted the monthly webinar that I have for that uh, neurodivergent group. And we were talking about anger um, and you know how to cope with the anger that comes up a lot in these relationships. So there's 
three options for you to talk privately. Um, and then this recording will be posted on my YouTube uh, under Dr. Kathy's Office Hours. That's why I changed the name a little bit. You can find it there. You can find previous years of Facebook Lives posted on, on my YouTube channel too. And so you can watch those. Um, you can, like I said, join the course or join the forums. You can also read books. I've written a number of books and hopefully I think I put my website up there so you can read that and get more information on all of this so that you don't have to ever just be curious or confused anymore about what's going on. And pretty soon I'm going to get my podcast up and running. I'm hoping I have that done in September. So I know people have been asking me for a podcast for a while. So I'm getting around to doing that. So you have something you can listen to and you don't always have to watch something or read a book or read a blog. So let's talk about this subject and uh, be feel free to leave me questions or comments or even disagreements. It's okay if you say, I don't think that it makes a lot of sense or I do it differently. I'd like to know that because remember, we are, um, all, this is a new field. You know, we're learning a lot and individual differences count. So just because someone's diagnosed on the spectrum doesn't mean they're like anybody else on the spectrum or any other individual for that matter. So let's, oh, and what I'll do first is I will, in addition to talking about this subject, I want to introduce you to um, the uh, conferences that I'm hosting this month uh, for the uh, private groups. They won't be hosted on Facebook. They'll be hosted on the private groups. Um, oh, actually, I'll, I'll get to that in just a second. So the topic, right? The topic. The dark side is narcissism. And this is really relevant to a couple of comments that people sent in today. Why is it that when there's a disagreement with my neurodiverse loved one, they can get so angry and even uh, resentful and vindictive uh, and really hostile? And the reason for that is pretty simple, even though it's not pleasant. The reason is that when your belief system is confronted and you don't realize that it's just a belief system, <laughs> that it's not necessarily the truth, at what we people do, both neurotypicals and neurodiverse people, is we can go to this place of uh, being angry or scared that something doesn't fit. And we need to have a lot of courage to stay out of being angry at our loved ones. That just because we're, there's been a conflict of some kind doesn't mean that it's the end of the world or that you have to defend yourself to the nth degree. So what regulates that angry or, or, or that vindictive behavior, what regulates that in most people is the awareness that if I go too far, I will destroy this loving relationship. Neurotypicals are very aware of that because we're interactive. We're always checking out, are we connected? Are we okay? For neurodiverse people, they want the relationship to work too. They want the, the love to stay but they can get very stuck on the topic, the words you've used. The, the, uh, they're gonna debate the content and they forget at times because they get so upset, they forget that they are eroding the trust in, in between you by going, by attacking the person. So I've had a lot of people on the spectrum tell me that they're, that they, don't want to have an argument at all with anybody. They don't want to talk about subjects that really can stir them up because they are afraid of their rage. They're, they are aware that I can go too far. And so they just don't talk about things. And I know that many of you neurotypicals have had that response as well, where you're trying to work through a difficulty with your neurodiverse loved one, but they stop. They just won't talk or they leave the room 
because they are not willing to go to that angry place as opposed to let's manage the anger let's get underneath what beliefs are getting in the way and solve the problem in a nonviolent communication way some of you are familiar with that term so what's that have to do with narcissism well if you believe that you can't let go of a disagreement if you believe that you're right you may push the other person away in favor of being right that's a bit self-absorbed isn't it oh yeah Haley good question what about the ones that are more than willing to go to that rage that's unacceptable that's abuse and if you have a partner that rages you need to remove yourself you that's never allow abuse and if they won't stop remove yourself until they're calm and then you can try and talk again we'll get back to that answer though that's a really big a big question so we have some people who feel like they they are totally justified in raging because you've said something that they consider to be wrong and nobody's justified in raging especially with their sweetheart why would you do that why would you try why would you destroy the relationship but neither is it helpful to totally shut down and not talk about things because you're afraid of rage so what neurodiverse people do need to do as well as all of us we need to learn to regulate our emotions better so that we don't go there that's a therapy issue so let me talk about the topics that i'm going to offer this month that you can sign up for uh, the first one is a video conference the video conferences are always small there's five people eight people um, I don't think there's usually any more than 10 people in, in the room. Um, and the video conferences are designed to bring members of the group together and talk to each other and get support from each other um, and, and give tips, but also to find out that you're not alone. Most everybody who comes to the video conferences are just wowed by, by the realization that other people are having the same experience that they are. So the first one video conference is narcissism is a choice for NT or ASD. It's a choice for both of us. Narcissism, um, unless you're diagnosed narcissistic, that's not a choice. It's a disorder. But when I'm, ta I'm talking about the type of narcissism where we can go to this place where we're going to rage and feel justified being right and pushing the other person away, that's a choice. We don't have to do it that way. So in this conference, we'll talk about how to choose differently, how to be kinder, how to put your anger on hold, how to realize that it's just a belief that you're that's being challenged. Uh, and that video conference is uh, these are the uh, video conferences for August. Normally, I offer these conferences uh, twice, each topic twice. August is just once because it's a short month for me. I'm taking a couple of weeks off. So the, this one will be offered on August 2nd and when you look at the calendar either on the facebook live or in the forums you'll see the times for these things the next video conference is entitled ghosting gaslighting and other games aspects play and that's offered on august 9th if you think about it if winning is all that matters and not maintaining goodwill if winning takes over and goodwill is not on the list then engaging in unethical conduct like ghosting and gaslighting and other manipulations that that's kind of okay it's not okay <laughs> but it feels okay to the person who feels wronged and i i just want to point out to you if you feel wronged by your sweetheart so wronged that you need to nail them to the wall to the wall then there's something wrong with the with the relationship this is no way to behave okay um, the next conference on the calendar is the teleconference it's not limited to you know eight people the teleconference is uh, and call uh, called the dark side of Asperger's so I will talk about more about this narcissism it's you call in from wherever you are in the world for the conference and it's on uh, August 15th at 1 1 Pacific time 
So whatever that is in Australia and New Zealand and Dubai and Finland, wherever else you're living. Um, anyway, the teleconference, I usually talk a little bit more in depth about the subject, and then I open up the queue for people to go in and ask uh, questions. Uh, and again, this is a recorded conference, so um, I put the recording up in the uh, advanced community forum for people to listen to. As a matter of fact, I want to let you know, remind you that if you're a member of the forums, the advanced community forum and the neurodiverse neurotypical forum, you've got recordings to listen to for many years past, both video conferences and teleconferences. And there's just a wealth of information at these conferences. Lots for you to um, listen to and learn about. And, and you can also make comments on past recordings. You can have little discussions there with other members in the forum. So uh, I just think it's really valuable. And I'm hoping the podcast is going to be like that for you too. I'll talk on similar subjects and you'll be able to share this information with others. Let's see here. Uh, then the next video conference uh, is Surviving Unremitting Grief. That's on August 16th. So one of the one of the things to consider is that when we don't have resolution to these mix-ups, these neurodivergent mix-ups, uh, we feel, well, we feel grief. We feel distress. Lots of tears come out in our groups as people realize that they're not connecting with their loved one. They're not connecting in a healthy way. And the grief just, just keeps pouring up, you know, bubbling up and pouring out of us over and over and over again each time we have one of these um, encounters with that narcissism. It is shocking to us to see our loved ones behave that way. And I'll get back to these subjects if you have questions for me too. The last video conference for the month that I'm hosting is Anger, Assertiveness, and Asperger's. That's on August 22nd. So assertiveness is different than anger. <laughs> and it's, it's different than debating and having to be right. Assertiveness is representing yourself in a uh, responsible way demonstrating that respect for the other person too, that they have the right to have their point of view, but you don't have to allow abuse. And so to be assertive is not an easy thing to do when you're under attack or when somebody is using unethical manipulation in order to win the debate. But so back to what Haley's talking about what about the ones that are more than willing to go to that rage? If you stay assertive and say, this doesn't work for me, I'm not doing this, you know, we're, I'm, I'm going to leave right now. I don't have to continue this conversation just because you're mad or because you've asked me a question. I don't even have to answer the question. You have the right to, you know, be respectful of yourself in a situation that's not okay. In fact, one of my favorite books is Manuel Smith's um, book, uh, Your Assertive Rights. And, uh, oh, excuse me, it's not Your Assertive Rights. It's um, When I Say No, I Feel Guilty. This is, this is the topic of his book. And he's listed assertive rights in the book. And you absolutely uh, would not say it, you, you're you not going to engage with somebody that treats you poorly, right? You're not going to engage and do that. Um, let's see here. I want to make sure I, I'll get back to those questions in just a minute. There's a couple of more things to do here. Oh, that's right. I do have one more teleconference that I'm offering at the end of the month. Um, and this is a date down here, yeah, August 29th. It's a it's a pop-up special bonus one. Um, and the topic is uh, clearing up the mystery of how people on the spectrum think. I thought this would be a good topic to have as we're moving into the fall and um, are, um, you know, sort of getting ready to really 
learn more things and get our relationships working better, understanding how they think. It's not necessarily related to narcissism, but if you understand the operating system of people on the autism spectrum and that it's different than people that are neurotypical, if you get it, you start saying, oh, that's what they're trying to tell me. If you understand how they think that they're transactional, that they're empathy triad blind, they're context blind. These are all things that um, have been written about for years. And then I want to remind you of two more events. And there should be a third event coming up in the fall. Um, Dr. or excuse me, <laughs> Dr. Julie, Julie Rollins, who's in New Zealand, offers a a uh, new member orientation every month. It's a free video call, and it's going to be on August 17th. And uh, Julie's been a member of our group for many, many years. She's really terrific. Um, that is uh, the, the, the group that she offers really helps you navigate all these resources, because we have so many dang resources, right? So many resources. And the resources are sometimes overwhelming to people when you're just getting started. Sometimes people don't know how to sign up for an event even or where they should start to learn more. So what I, uh, what, I, what I do is I urge you to please go to Julie's group. And you don't have to be a new member to go. You can go to the group just to ask questions about what this life is like for everybody else. It's another place to get support. The group is just for the neurotypicals who are a member of our uh, meetup group and our advanced community forum. But other than that, um, you're free to go even if you've been in the group 15 years. Um, and then Julie also offers uh, a local uh, local time zone-ish, sort of time zone-ish, for New Zealand and Australia and, and, and that area of the world. She offers a, a Zoom meeting to just get together and talk about perhaps some of the uh, topics. Um, oh, uh, let me take care of that, everybody. Don't worry. I will find a way to uh, take care of the comments that are coming in that are inappropriate. I'm so sorry that that's happening for you. Sometimes um, things do get uh, through. Facebook is pretty good about uh, deleting things that are not uh, supposed to be posted, uh, and I'm trying to manage them as I go here. So don't I don't don't even bother to comment to them. I'll I'll try to report this person. Uh, oh, so let me see here if I've got any more before I go on to the, the questions that were submitted. By the way, you can submit questions ahead of time. And I, yeah, I did block the person, Lynette, not to worry. I took care of that. I think I did it. We'll see. And thank you, Haley, for reporting the comments. We, we have enough to deal with, don't we? We have enough stress in our lives without having to deal with somebody who decides that they're going to make fun and, and come in. It looks like I'm going to have to keep hiding this person. Um, so if any of you want to hide them, help me with that. Um, okay. Somebody asked about Julie's group. You can always find out where all of these groups are when they're taking place by going to either the meetup or the advanced community forum, and you'll look under events, or you can go to my website. I, I post events on my website as well. So... You can always find out when the next event is. If you are a member of those two groups, you will get an email reminder. Okay. And let me see here. Julie's group is, if Julie's in the room, help me with this. Her next group is August 17th. Both of them are on August 17th. Pacific time, 3 o'clock and 5 o'clock. So they're posted, like I said, on the just go to Meetup and you'll find them posted there, or you can go to my website and find them, and then and then you'll have the link. If you're a member, you can just click the link, the Zoom link, and you'll you'll get into the into the group. 
Um, so let me scroll back up here through these messages. Susan says, his views, proper English, or just any subject are the correct ones. Everything I say is corrected. I'm not sure he even understands he's doing this, even though I've made it known. Yeah, so what Susan is referring to is that sort of narcissistic quality that um, it's okay to correct you. It's okay to say that my particular point of view is the right view. That's narcissism, okay? That's not polite. It's not always right. <laughs> um, and, uh, and I agree with Susan when she says he may not even know that he's doing this. This is context blindness, it, an example of it, for example. If we notice things, if neurotypicals notice things, somebody mispronounces a word or, uh, you know, you disagree with some point they're making or they, they forgot to, uh, you know, close the door, take off their muddy shoes, whatever it is, um, we decide when we're going to bring that up or if. We wait, we maintain the relationship first and make the correction second or not at all. Sometimes we will suggest some, a change in the other person's behavior, but we don't do it at the expense of the relationship. We're more aware of that because we are relationship oriented. One of the things that's missing for many, many neurodiverse persons is they don't couch their correction within the context of, I care about you. They don't say, you know, I have an idea about that, if you don't mind. Or I've noticed that you've said uh, a word uh, this way several times. And, um, you know, it, I usually say it differently. It could be wrong. You know, we, we say things like that. We go, well, I could be wrong about it. And maybe it's not important to you, but I thought I'd let you know there's another way to say that, right? So they don't know that because that would be considering you first, considering the speaker first or the listener first, the topic second. They just launch into the topic. They do make the assumption <laughs> that you want to know their opinion, which you may not want to know, right? You may not want to know it, um, but they assume that because they've noticed something that's incorrect, they should speak it. I think that that's a therapy issue. And so what I do is I will talk to the neurodiverse person about what's fair, what's polite, and try to help them understand that they may be perfectly correct about something. Maybe, maybe if they were taking a multiple choice test, they would get a better grade than I would, but it's not always polite to point out another person's flaws and make them feel inferior. Just depends, right? Okay. Um, so I think it's a therapy issue, Susan. And I think when when people with Asperger's need to learn how to manage that behavior better. I Many, many times I've, I've mentioned a, uh, a young man who really put this in words. Very, He explained it really well when he was, uh, he's on the spectrum. And he said, I'm no good with the fluff. No good with the fluff. So his girlfriend was upset with him, and he said, it's because I didn't use enough fluff. People on the spectrum call it fluff, chit-chat, backstory, uh, curly cues, you know, whatever. They think that all those sentences that, that neurotypicals use to be polite and to invite the other person into the conversation, they think that's extra, right? And it's not extra. It absolutely maintains the relationship in much better health. And they can learn to do better, but it still is difficult for them to learn that they have to follow rules. And sometimes I'll have them get an etiquette book. Um, so Haley says, my husband seems to sometimes choose to only correct me, not others. Um, and oops, I lost that. There we go. Correct me, but not others. Yes. Um, well, <laughs> you could take it as a compliment, Haley, <laughs> that um, that he's assuming that you want to know what he what he thinks. 
And uh, you could say things like, you know, I appreciate that you're trying to help me, uh, but sometimes some help is not the kind of help I want. So it's really important to put them, put that behavior back there. I'm, I'm, I don't want that kind of help. Thank you so much. Right. But another reason that they can do it better out there in the world is they don't have to do it too often. They're interacting with you more often. Other people might let it go. They might just go, well, that's him. That's what he does. You know, they might let it go more than we will. We find it offensive. We neurotypicals, I mean, because we're trying to, you know, keep the relationship sound, keep the love going. So Susan says, so is there a way to deflect this behavior in the moment? I find myself just shutting down. Yeah, I don't blame you. Um, in order to deflect the behavior, um, I think you just say stop. When they're hammering at you, when they're debating, when they're escalating, I use the international stop sign and just go, this is not going to work with me. I don't participate in this kind of behavior. I'm out of here. And you really do have to remove yourself. You have to take yourself away from this. It's not easy to do. I'm not saying any of this is easy. It's just that they need to know that you have identified this behavior as unkind or abusive and you're not gonna put up with it. So they need to know how to do it differently. They want to know how to do it differently if they're good people. But the reason Susan shuts down, I know other people in the room can understand that. Um, the, the, the reason we shut down is it's tiring. It's demoralizing. So that's a narcissistic quality. OK, the narcissistic quality comes at us and it's so shocking that we get we just we shut down. That's that's the goal of narcissism is to control you. All right. I'm not saying that people on the spectrum are trying to control you, but they use those narcissistic tactics because they are not using empathy. They are not identifying that I'm connect, connecting with my loved one. What they're identifying is that they want to make a point or that you've said something that they violently disagree with and they're gonna let you know that. That's not okay, it's not fair, it's not kind, and we, we really can't allow it, right? Let's see here. Right, so Nancy says grief, not connecting and, and never will is an ongoing loss what what do i do about that ongoing loss we feel that okay we feel the disconnect when they go for the juggler when they want to fight with us about something and forget that they're talking to someone they care for we feel that disconnect and it feels like they've just taken their love away for good because it's it can be that intense they don't know that but they can they can know when you say that's not okay I won't participate. How do you survive that grief? <sighs> you know, I think you need to know that you're an amazing person and that there's plenty of people out there who value you. You know, that you don't deserve to be treated this way, but you're dealing with someone who doesn't, who needs a lot of guidance about how to be better behaved, right? But I agree, the grief, uh, every day I have grief over my autistic family members who've treated me badly. Every day when I think about some of those things won't ever be resolved. Some of those disagreements won't ever be resolved. So let's see here. Um, I wanna make sure I'm getting to everybody here. Right, so Haley says, I find myself fighting back and it spirals to meltdown, then phase of grief. Yeah, of course you fight back because it's in our nature to protect ourselves. So when someone comes after you, discrediting you in some way, you know, we stand up for ourselves, that's appropriate. Uh, it, I think it's very appropriate, but stand up for yourself and say, stop. This is, this is going no further. It's hard when you get on a roll <laughs> to, to have it go no further, but you're not going to get anywhere. You might as well just go, you know, break, break the bond 
yourself and take a break. The reason we grieve about that is that we don't want to break the bond. We don't want to break the bond at all. We want to get to the bottom of the problem. We're willing to hang in there through thick and thin and get to the bottom of these things. But you have to cut off abuse. Otherwise, they will continue to think that that's the way we solve things. I'm going to get down here. Um, Ola says, narcissists have an arsenal of tactics to destroy their partner's reality and confidence to gain or keep control over the relationship or marriage. They may make you feel like you're crazy, making it less likely that you will reach out to family and so forth. Yes. So if you actually are with a narcissist, this is not safe. And I would highly recommend that you just leave, period. Um, the narcissist goal, they are so weak, so deeply insecure that their goal is to destroy you in order to feel okay about themselves. So um, you will keep reacting to these behaviors uh, in a shocked way, and that gives them power over you. So you, as soon as that narcissistic behavior begins, you say no. You stop. I'm not engaging. I'm not going there. You need to handle this better. People that are autistic but not diagnosed narcissistic, they want to be fair. They may not understand what they're doing because if they're not in therapy, they don't, they're not being helped, but they really don't want to destroy the relationship. So the goal is to say, that's not fair. I won't do it this way. I'm not having a debate. I just have an opinion about something and I'm entitled to it. If you don't want to hear it, that's okay. I'll go for a run or I'll call up a friend and we'll go to the movies. I, I don't need to continue this. You've got to stop it. I'm not sure what Susan's referring to here. She says, um, I've done that. And he says, I'm dictating. Um, so I think it's that Susan is saying, I've said, I'm, I'm not going to do this. I, I, I'm stopping this. Um, who cares if he says you're dictating? You can say, well, if that's how you see it, I'm taking care of myself. That's what I'm doing. When he says you're dictating something to him, he's trying to pull you back into a transactional debate. He's trying to win because you're going to say, no, that's not true. And he's going to say, yes, it is. And then you have the fight going again. I would just go, if that's how you see it, if dictating is what I need to do so that you treat me with respect, I guess I'm dictating. You don't have to accept that somehow that's bad behavior. Standing up for yourself is not bad behavior. That's being assertive. You have the right to say, I don't like this. Um, I'm not sure what the next one is, Susan. Maybe you could clarify the cyber spying thing. Nancy says, please talk about gaslighting. So what gaslighting is, is a narcissistic technique that makes you feel as if you don't know what you're talking about. They're, they'll disagree with you, say that you've got your facts wrong or that something isn't really happening when it really is happening. And the problem is it feels like gaslighting to us when the neurodiverse person disagrees with our point of view because they, they don't just disagree with the point of view, they disagree with the person. See, we wouldn't do that. We might say, gosh, I've never heard about that. Or, you know, that's a, but I don't think that's true. But, you know, maybe you know something that I haven't read about this week. Whatever. We'll give people some credit for having a different point of view. But the person on the spectrum, if they don't have a proper training, will go after you as if you are wrong. As if you don't have any brains. Does that make sense? I hope. We've got lots of questions popping up here. Um, Susan says, can you say more about transactional? Sure. Uh, there's two major things that I talk about in my course and in my books and in, and in our groups is that it's a lot easier to understand what you're dealing with with someone on the spectrum if you realize they're primarily transactional and that neurotypicals are primarily interactional. 
So the transactional person is looking for a yes or no, right or wrong, black or white answer. That's your neurodiverse loved one. Their focus is on the words you use. They're looking for what's the point. And if you don't get to the point, they won't listen or they'll tell you you don't make sense. There's the gaslighting. Neurotypicals, on the other hand, know ourselves in relation to others. So we're interactional. We're checking out who the speaker is, who the person is that I'm interacting with. That's more important than what they're saying. We're certainly listening to what they're saying, but we're taking in what they're saying within the context of who is saying it. So when we use an interactional approach with our transactional loved ones, they're waiting for us to say things that make sense to them or something they want to hear. What we neurotypicals are doing is trying to open up a conversation. We're trying to get, you know, just have a connection. Connection comes first for neurotypicals. Getting to the point comes second. Most of the time at home with your loved one. I mean, in a business context, maybe something else. Um, and so the problem is when, when we, what, the problem with the transactional approach is that neurotypicals will keep answering their questions when you really need to say, I'm not here to answer your questions. Or I sometimes will say to my neurodiverse clients, I'll say, you can ask me lots of questions, but you're on the wrong track. It won't help you understand me better or your spouse. Because they start going down their line of reasoning like they're a litigator in the courtroom. Isn't this true? Isn't this true? Didn't you say this? Wasn't it at this time? And you're going down this list of questions that aren't really opening up a conversation. Um, I'm, I, I'm trying to understand, Susan, what the cyber spying was about. Uh, that's what I don't understand. Um, I, I, I just don't get the comment. If somebody suggested cyber spying, I, I just don't know what it's about. I, I can look back and see what the comment was, but maybe I didn't get to the second part of the comment. Well, that might be it. A narcissist may use emotional, mental, physical, financial, spiritual, or sexual forms of abuse. My big thanks to people who recommend me to something uh, on Instagram to, to help me spy into all my wife's social media accounts. Now I can see each and every chat of my wife's message. Um, oh, well, okay. Um, I do think it's important to be careful that you don't go that far. Um, so I think that's what Susan's re responding to. Um, if you are going to spy on your spouse, then the relationship's over, don't you think? Or if they're spying on you, then you've really, everything's kind of descended into uh, a terrible adversarial thing. I, I, I just can't imagine how that's ever going to be retrievable. So I, I just wouldn't do that. I, you know, I, I appreciate that somebody may feel that stress that they want to go there, but I just wouldn't. I, I, I would go on with my life rather than having to find out what on earth has been going on. And personally, I've been stalked and harassed and spied on. Uh, I've had cyber spying to, to, toward me uh, in the past. And it was very, very distressing. I was able to put an end to it. I, I just don't think that you want to engage in, in that. But I get why some people can get that distressed, frankly, or you can be so angry that you, you want to get to the bottom of what's really going on behind your back. But if you don't trust the other person that much, I, I think you just need to leave the relationship. I hope, I mean, that's my opinion. 
and <laughs> that's not the topic for today anyway. Thank you, Susan, for clarifying. I wasn't sure what on earth was going on. And I did delete that comment, by the way. Um, so anybody got any other comments about the topics here? Or how to be part of the group or how to take better care of yourself, right? Again, you know, that's the idea. The, uh, the dark side is the you know, that, that tendency to go into um, a very manipulative, controlling, you know, sad way to be. And I, I don't think we should do that. I'm looking to see if there's anybody else that's had a comment here. By the way, you know, I might just point out that uh, some of these unkind and, uh, comments that are popping into our, 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 our forum today are because Facebook is a, a public forum and that's the reason my groups are private. I, I like to regulate it better. I, I want to make sure that we can speak freely and don't have to deal with people that are going to say harmful things to you. I, I don't want you to have to deal with that stuff. Um, so Haley says, are, is there a way to debrief these instances with them? Yes, of course there is. Uh, when they're calm, but I would do it with the therapist uh, because the therapist is going to be appear more objective than you, right? So like when I, when I mentioned something to um, this young man who was saying that I'm no good with the fluff or the kind of inappropriate things that he said to the girlfriend you know i i care about him i want him to get better and he could hear me could he easily change no he had to practice but yeah good for you haley yeah she says um i'm going to uh, I, I can't do a lot about trying to eliminate some of these comments that are coming through. But um, what I'm saying is our private forums are where we don't have to deal with people uh, stepping in and saying things they shouldn't. Um, okay, so. Oh, uh, the topic was about lying and, um, uh, you know, all human beings can lie. Everybody can lie. I think it's kind of a, a mistake to say that people on the spectrum don't lie. Of course they do. Um, it's just one of those things that human beings do. We shouldn't. We should try to be as authentic as possible. But sometimes there's a characteristic uh, kind of lying that people on the spectrum do. And it is uh, lying to just avoid the, the stress. You know, telling you that they did something that they didn't, or I never said that, and then you show them in an email that they did say it. Um, it's it's sometimes it's just because I'm so stressed, I, I don't know what else to say. Yes, thank you, Haley. I do know how to report them. I have tried to report a few of those people, so um, we're we're working on it. But this is the first time I've had this happen, so it's pretty interesting that some people have decided to step in and <laughs> make crazy comments. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this up today. Um, unless there's any other question that you just absolutely have to, you know, have a comment about. Because I don't wanna miss somebody who's had something that's important that they wanna answer. Okay, remember now this is recorded. It's being, uh, it'll be posted on, um, It'll be here on Facebook, but it'll also be on my YouTube channel. The comments are not posted. So, um, and if there's any comments in this string here that are inappropriate, I will make sure that they get deleted so that nobody has to be harmed by them. I don't want you to come to one of these conferences and have to deal with that. And if you have questions for me, please let me know. You can always uh, text me through Facebook or on uh, any of the groups that I'm participating in, you're welcome to leave me a message. So take care, everybody. <laughs>